Hi, I'm Femi O.K. and you're in the stream. Today we look at arranged marriages, the evolving practice of arranged marriages and how couples are navigating it with a little bit of a modern twist. Here to help us do that, our digital producer Malika Bilal, who also happens to be young, free and single. <laughs> Talk to me later about that. Thank you very much, Femi. Well, our community is talking to us and they're showing us that this is a multicultural phenomenon, as you can see from the pictures in the studio here today except there are also misconceptions around arranged marriage. And so our community shared them with us. I'm sharing them with you. Some of the common words that pop up online forced that people are confused about forced marriages versus arranged Muslims, that it's specific to followers of one religion only, and wedding night, that couples only meet on their wedding night. We're going to hear from couples on the show today. They'll share their own stories, but we also want to hear from you at home. Tweet us with hashtag AJStream. Here's the thing, in mom and dad's eyes, I had no idea how to get a girlfriend. I don't know how they fell in love, but mom and dad are the happiest couple I've ever seen. The way you guys married, would that work for me as well? Yeah. Not even a doubt. There's a matchmaking. This girl is good with that boy, but that boy is good with this girl. So all the girls and all the boys get married. Dad sent me 20 pictures and resumes of matrimonial candidates, which is totally normal, right? How are we going to set it down? It's not going to happen on our marriage. I don't want you guys jumping and getting all these other people involved. Looks good, so I'm going to forward this to Ravi, okay? Within weeks, my bio data was in the hands of uncles, aunts, family, friends, and complete strangers. What are your thoughts on arranged marriage? It might not be what you think. As you just saw in the clip from the upcoming film, Meet the Patels, modern arrangements can include dating, the help of websites and apps, and the choice to keep looking for a love match. Variations of arranged marriage are present in every culture around the world, so I'm sure many of you will relate to our guests and their stories. So joining us, we have Ravi Patel, the actor and director of Meet the Patels, and it follows his journey into the world of arranged dating with the goal of eventually getting married. Ravi's parents, Vasant and Champa Patel, who had an arranged marriage, hello. Sarubi and Surendra and her husband Sanjay had an arranged marriage six years ago. And Ansi Maruthanal and her husband Michael Abram are Indian Americans who were married two years ago, almost to the day. Happy anniversary, you two. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, when do you decide? When is it time, Ravi? When do you know, okay, I'm, a br I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of doing this thing and let's do it the arranged way? How do you know? <laughs> when you can't push off your parents any longer, oh. I think it's finally uh, time to get yeah, started. <laughs> no, it was, you know, for me, you know, for me, what you saw happen, uh, you know, and this is how the documentary starts, was I had just broken up with this white girlfriend who I'd never told mom and dad about. And then we went on this family trip to India, an 18-hour flight in which my sister, who had just bought this new camera, has it pointed on me while mom and dad are on my other side and just freaking out that I'm almost 30 and not married uh -oh. and also saying, hey, we're freaking out. Also, the entire country of India is going to be freaking out in about 18 <laughs> hours. And, uh, you know, when that many people are freaking out, you start freaking out yourself. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a point where... Um, there's some, a lot of family pressure and your family was like, when are you going to get married? In all kinds of different ways. So, Abby, did that happen to you? Were you getting that sense of, I have to get married. The family want me to get married. I have to get married now. I wanted to get married. Ah. But yeah, huh. I did have enough pressure on my head. There was a time when my dad told me, okay, this is the last proposal I'm bringing to you. Accept it or else you and I are done with each other. Hmm. So you can imagine the mounting pressure I had on my head, but I didn't give up and I was, I, I knew I would get married only when I wanted to get married, when I was ready, ready to get married. And that's what I did. So I, This I, was after five years of uh, uh, go ahead. trial. Yeah. I mean, my father looked for matches for me for more than five years years and he kept bringing me proposals i kept saying no to them finally he brought this guy to me and he said okay talk to him find out more about him try to understand him if you like him good if you don't like him you and i are done 
<laughs> but clearly, if he was doing that for five years, it shows the amount of love he had for you and concern for you. And that's what people online are talking about. So I want to bring in these two comments. Uh, Champa and Basant Al, I will direct these to you. This is from Rose, and she says, this shows that love, especially for both parents and children, to some degree, shows a level of trust and this next person comments on that as well and says, well, as long as it's arranged and not forced, I think it's a good idea because if your family and friends don't know you well enough to set you up, who does? So as parents, did you feel like you, of course, had your son's best interests at heart and you know him well enough to know what he might like? As you know, uh, parents have an unconditional love and hopefully every parent has its unconditional love for their kids. And they all want nothing but the best for their kid. Because of the way you are looking and because the way kids are looking and mindset is different, when we send someone, maybe we think on our angle is the best, best match for our uh, child. The children does not think that way, obviously. And that is where uh, maybe they feel that we are either forcing them or we are bringing them uh, uh, dull people or we are bringing them dumb people, yeah. whatever they think. <laughs> yeah. But I think we know our children well and when we propose somebody, we feel that there is a suitable match. And those are the only one that we would propose to them. What do you think is a suitable... They, because uh, we go through so many of them. Yeah and we screen them out already. So what's the screening process like, Uncle Vasan? What's, what, how do you screen them out? You think, yes, this, this young lady, she, be... she's not quite right for, for my Ravi. Who did yeah, because you... we, we know Ravi's personality, that he, if he's outgoing or certain kind of hobby interest, certain personality he has. So we make sure, and also his education level, his uh, future ambitions. Also, we, we do talk to each other about his preference and what would be right. So when we see a girl, if the girl is personality-wise does not match, like Ravi is outgoing, the girl is really not at all, then we know that it is just not going to click. Or the education level does not match. Or even the family background that we know will cause a conflict. Or some of his basic belief. Ravi? So never... or, or his interest in sports or movies or uh. his career. So a lot of these things, we look at it and make sure that it matches. Ravi, sounds like your parents got it down. Where's your wife? <laughs> <laughs> uh, watch the movie. Uh, you know, I'd, also, I'd, also, I'd also want to add that, you know, just an important distinction to make is, you know, when we talk about what is the arranged marriage today, it's not what it was during my parents' time. It's a modern-day semi-arranged marriage. What it really is, is just a weird way to be introduced to a girl. But after that, you're still, you're still able to date and spend time and make the decision on your own. So I just don't want people to think uh, that, I mean, there's no sense of force here. The only, the only amount of forcefulness that exists here is just that my parents are very opinionated and convincing people. Uh, but, you know, the choice are is we mine. Really didn't know that? <laughs> Uh, Mom probably has sent me five texts in the last minute during this conversation. <laughs> um, but do you, do you see the distinction in what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and I, I, I think people online also get that distinction because we have heard from a lot of people saying this is just an updated version or, or, or a throwback version, and there are updated versions of arranged marriage, but they're all the same thing. But I want to bring Auntie and Michael in here. It's, it's um, ironically. I want to bring Auntie and Michael in here and, and get back to you, Robbie, with this, though, because a lot of people are saying that Arranged marriage is actually a rejection of Hollywood-esque romance. You can see this tweet here, which can often create these unreasonable expectations. So picking up on that thought about Hollywood, Bollywood, and that's being our ideal, there's a video comment from Ina Khan. Um, Auntie, I want you to have a listen to what she had to say. I think if we view arranged marriages under the normative lens of romance that's been set in stone in the West by um, industries such as Hollywood or Bollywood in South Asia, Arranged marriages will almost always be viewed as archaic. You won't see a remake of um, Sleeveless in Seattle where Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan meet through an arranged marriage. But at the same time, it's interesting because it's actually quite a practical solution for two people looking to get married where they use an intermediary such as parents or, God forbid, a Rishtanti to find their potential spouse for them. So, Auntie, for one, I would love to see that film, a Bollywood version of Sleeveless in Seattle. <laughs> but two, she talks about there not being that kind of romance. But I know for you, 
there was some romance involved. There was even a guitar involved in your engagement. Yeah, so, you know, it's, I kind of agree with what Robbie said, where it's, it's modern day. So it's your parents introducing to somebody that could be a potential spouse. And, you know, we kind of see this happen in our day-to-day. -day. Like your friends say, hey, I met this really cool guy at work. I think he's going to be perfect for you. So in a way, I don't think it's much different than that, except the end result is for marriage and not just uh, for a boyfriend. Uh, but as far as the romance goes, I, I don't think there was a difference in that for me and Michael. Like, we still talked on the phone. He still sent me flowers, wrote me poems, sang for me. There is a lot of romance, actually. Like, absolutely. So, so the gap um, between when you first were introduced to each other and, and first met, how long was that gap? It was exactly a month. A month. A month. And then the gap mm -hmm. between when you first met and you first kissed was how long? <laughs> I'm so like, cheeky. I know. Like two days? Five hours. Two days. Five, Five hours. hours. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's a man who was counting. All right. And the gap between <laughs> that first kiss and you getting married was how long? Less than a year. No, before we got, no. Oh, a, we got a little over a year. Yeah, yeah a year. A little months. over a year. Mm -hmm. So you had time. You, had, you actually had time to yeah. kind of get to know each other. Um, talk yeah. about getting to know each other. Let me just head, head back to Sanjay. Sanjay, you had a questionnaire for your future wife. And it was quite an intense questionnaire. Do you want to tell us through some of the things that you really had to know before you were going to get married to somebody that had only really just been introduced to you? What did you need to have? What did you need to know? Uh, actually, I'm a vegetarian and I'm a teetotal, uh, to, uh, totally. Uh, so I wanted that, uh, okay, uh, I should know her food habits, her uh, <laughs> writing uh, habits, or even uh, her hobbies and her interests uh -huh. in different uh, aspects. These were more important for me to judge her uh, maturity level because I oh. wanted someone who is uh, mature enough to understand me and the conversation in our uh, relationship is on equal basis, absolutely equal basis. And I'll be happy to get uh, inputs from her so that... Uh, so that Ravi, sanity, what, did you, make, what did you make of this exam that you were being set? <laughs> the day he sent me the email, I forwarded it to my dad. And I showed the email to him and I told him, who, who the hell are you considering for me? How can I marry this insane person who sends questions to a girl in the very first email that he writes to her? And by that, he became so defensive immediately. And he was like, oh, no, he's such an understanding man. He's a hardworking man. You know, he's not like you. He's not, he's an intense man. He, he he understands life and he's look look at the way how maturely he's dealing with it so you should be proud of it may i simply ask that i have uh, these traits you have these traits these are not matching how can this we is be starting friends? very that romantic not <laughs> so what point <laughs> okay so what point sanjay did you fall in love with sarabi uh it was after a uh, few discussions and a few chats on email okay. and uh, Thereafter, I realized it. Ke, yes, she's perfect. She oh, was uh, nice. able to understand what it was in my mind. She huh? was able to predict it. And now it is so easy for me. Mm. I don't know how much chapati I'll, I will eat, what food uh, preferences I have when I enter in a hotel. Uh -huh. She handles manual. She handles everything. She handles each of my relationship uh, with my uh, brothers, sisters, and everything. Wow. Even for my professional advice, I ask her. When I feel that uh, I'm not well, ready to take I, all I can my, say is, uh, I think you, judgment. You, you possibly could have married the perfect wife. Let me just show you two pictures here. This on my laptop is just after you got married. So these are the newlyweds. And then five years later, I think you look even yeah. closer yeah. than just after you got <laughs> married. There's something there you that look just. Closer even now. <laughs> yes, even closer. There's not even any oxygen between the two of you. Malika. I, well, picking up on that, Femi, and being closer even after um, getting to know each other in the beginning in that marriage, this is the tweet that I wanted to share. Um, uh, Uncle Vasant, I'll, I'll give this one to you. He says, I have seen people falling in love with each other post-engagement, post-marriage. It's not something that's impossible. So he's pushing back against that idea that there has to be love first. What do you think about that? I think the <clears throat> love first, like in a Western uh, you know, marriage system. I'm not sure how much love is left after marriage because so much used before. 
while in the our arranged marriage system there is no love before so you have a whole life ahead of you to develop the love and you keep discovering each other you keep finding each other and uh, that is where the fun is so honeymoon is not just a few days or few months but rest of your life and it just continue to get better so i think if you if you uh, uh, like someone if you have a strong commitment that this is a person who i'm going to be with the rest of the life in when we say good in a bad time we really mean both then you know that this marriage is forever so the love does develop i mean you know no one that true with even any two individuals we have a little doggy that we never wanted a dog our son gave us and we fell in love with the dog but we spent so much time together and our son likes it so yeah love always develops if you have spent some enough time and enough commitment with the person uh, ravi you don't have to do this looking for the perfect spouse by yourself there are different ways you can do that so i'm just looking through here there's shadi.com which is like a, a matchmaking service um, there are several, there are lots and lots and lots of different ways that you can do this. There are even a couple of apps you can use as well. What did you find the most effective? Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say, I think you're, you're bringing up a good point, which is that the, like, you know, the system that we're talking about, the semi-arranged marriage system, is not that unlike internet dating. It's yeah. just a way of applying filters, the idea being that hopefully it'll make you more compatible and in a position to cultivate love. Uh, what was the most effective? Actually, they all were effective in their own ways. Yeah. One of the best things I read out when we were making the documentary was that you need to be as open-minded as possible in sure. which websites you use because the more that you have out there, you know, kind of the better your chances. All right, Ravi, we'll come back to you in a moment. We're just going to need to clear up your audio, but we'll come back to you. So I, I want to go to Ansi and Michael who have the most gorgeous wedding video. It is unbelievably gorgeous. Thank you. It's like a happy ending Bollywood, Hollywood, all mixed up together. <laughs> we'll show you some pictures here. I'm wondering how important family is in this arranged marriage process. Uh, who has the most say? Is it is it Ansi and Michael, or is it the family around you, or is it all of you doing it together? I think in this day and age, it's more. I think more of the weight is on us. Yeah. At least you know in our called in where we're from. But you know when my parents met, you know back then it was largely the parents, their parents who had the say in it. So. Um, and that, that's what makes it a little bit nicer, that, you know, in this day and age where we have the option to say no yeah. or yes. And, yeah. and that's helped us out a lot, you know, that we don't feel forced in it, that we actually have a say in it. So that that helps out a lot. Michael, how many I mean, no's? the success of it. How many no's did you say before you said yes? Uh, there were quite a few. <laughs> quite a few. My parents were very anxious. I was the last child in, in the family to get married, so right. they were very anxious. They didn't. They were concerned about me. Right. Yeah. And and Ansi, for you, how many knows before you said yes? Um, 12, 13. Right. Um, um, why so many knows? I sound like your, your auntie now. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with him? Yeah. Um, like what, what, what was your criteria? Is, I wanted somebody who was very intelligent, outgoing, very loving, smart. Michael checked all of those categories off, and he was an Eagle Scout, an added bonus. <laughs> oh. So I knew he could build stuff. Bonus points. And, yeah, bonus points. <laughs> one, of the, one of the biggest things that sold me on ANSI after I saw her picture was that our first conversation, because I knew we, we were long distance, and I knew, you know, conversation is really important to me, be able to talk to that person, your future spouse. Um, and our first conversation was like three, four hours long, and there was no lulls in the conversation. Not saying that that's a bad thing, but it was, but yeah, there were no lulls, and it was great. Uh, and that really attracted me to her was just being able to talk about mm -hmm. anything. I think most people have the same basic criteria. You know, you want to find somebody that you get along with, that you can rely on, that you trust, and just really complement each other. And that, that's hard to find. You can't just pick the first person that comes your way. So I think when 
Michael and I spoke, it, everything, it sounds very cliche, but it all just fell into place. Like I, I knew when I hung up the phone, I sent a text message to my best friend and said, wow, I think this is it. <laughs> so ironically, he did the same thing. He <laughs> called his friend and said, ah, oh, this is great. So yeah. So, so it sounds like you're sharing some of the ingredients to make arranged marriages a success. Here's some more ingredients. This is from Shona on Twitter. She says, no marriage can be successful without your parents' support, whatever kind it might be. That creates understanding and bonding. Some more ingredients here. This is in a video comment. Um, Surabi, I'm gonna direct this to you. Have a listen. I think that because in arranged marriages, couples come from similar financial and social standings, they have an easier time adjusting to their new lives with each other. But the simple fact is that a mere hour or even a month is not enough time to get to understand a person. And that sets couples towards a lifetime of compromises and disappointments that they weren't ready for. So Surabhi, a lifetime of compromise, compromises. What was the biggest compromise that you think you had to make? Uh, I won't really say I had to make a compromise because I turned it all into my favor, so <laughs> I cannot complain. Like he, we were poles apart when we met. When we got married, we were still poles apart. A year down the line, we were still poles apart. Things changed only when I realized, okay, no, this is not how it's going to be. I have to change the situation. So I changed myself a bit. Like, you know, you do it even with your friends. And so I don't think it makes any difference when you do the same in a, in a marriage. You do it with your friends as well. Like if your friends, if your friends don't want to go out, you convince them or you go out. So I think I won't say I made a compromise, but if I have to mention something, then maybe uh, he's an introvert, I'm an extrovert. So yeah, getting him to express openly uh, was... No, I, will, I will share. Uh... Surbi was well determined and she said uh, no to various proposals uh, because of the only reason that she wanted to work after marriage. She was yeah, in a uh, well-paid job, job and she was earning three times what I am earning today. And, uh, but, and I was uh, never uh, saying you leave, your, you leave your job, but after our marriage was uh, nearly fixed. And uh, my first posting I got uh, in Andamans, Andamans and Nicobar Islands. Which, and, is, which uh, is a very, 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 remote, very remote island. Group mm -hmm. of islands. She didn't even ask twice. Uh, she simply decided. I didn't decided, even ask once. Uh, uh, she uh, decided to quit. Just to put moral pressure on me, she said, okay, okay just you say it once that I'm leaving it for you. I said, okay, okay, I'll be happy if we are together. That's all. And she left the job forever. And that is true love there, right there, Sanjay, there. sitting right there by you, true love. <laughs> but uh, it is a really, really big uh, moral uh, pressure on me always yeah. to now um, uh, make her feel good and happy because she has sacrificed so many <laughs> Yeah, hello. <laughs> I, make sure, I, I make sure he not just acknowledges but appreciates Whatever I give I up. have no and doubt that you that do, Saravi. <laughs> All right. So, uh, getting back to Ravi, who is sitting there by himself at the moment, there's a lot more to meet the Patels than than what we've talked, what we've been talking about uh, today. But it, the concept is so universal, Ravi. If we want to watch the film, and it's hilarious, and I recommend everybody does. Thank you. Um, and your parents stole <laughs> stole the movie. When can they watch yeah. the film? When, it, <laughs> when is it out? Uh, thank you. Yeah, mom and dad are cinema gold. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We uh, we premiere in theaters uh, September 11th in New York, Chicago, and LA, and then the week after that, we are nationwide. And I will also add yes. that if you go to our Meet the Patels Facebook page, okay. that Do dad that right will now. probably reply to All right. anything you say. Okay, that is fantastic. He's very active. All right, yes. Uh, Facebook.com slash Meet the Patels film, and then you can meet Uncle Vasant and Auntie Chama, and then um, you can be part of their family as well. Thank you to all of our arranged marriage couples. Thanks for watching. See you online. Stream.adazira.com.
Hello again, this is the Streams Post Show. Let's get right back to our conversation. Ravi, I'm, I'm really curious because in the documentary you talked to a lot of other couples um, who had basically arranged marriages, different styles of arranged marriage, but arranged marriages. You didn't talk to anybody who wasn't happy, who it wasn't succeeding for. <laughs> there were your cousins all living with your cousins all in a big house yeah. and all the Patels were having a fantastic time. Your mum and dad are just the most amazing happy 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 couple yeah. you were even talking yeah. to a bridegroom on his way to his wedding saying do you have any doubts and he said none none whatsoever <laughs> it was like give the guy a break so you, even though you there was nobody who was miserable there was nobody who it wasn't working for why well first of all i think there are people for whom it doesn't work yeah. uh that we ne didn't necessarily talk to you cut them out um, but i think for the yeah no i mean i just i think you know it's kind of the downside of this is that there are often relationships that stay together that maybe shouldn't mm. but by far the vast majority of these relationships are really successful because they're rooted in more than just love they're rooted in compatibility they're rooted in commitment and so this basic concept of that we're building something together and that it's going to take work and it's going to be a lot easier if you want the same things in life and, you know, you even speak the same language and you get along with each other's families. Um, that's kind of the element that this filter, you know, of, um, you know, whether it's whether it's Internet dating or my parents, um, that's what filters do for you. And then after that, you know, whether it's before or after, you hope that there's some love there. See, I'm wondering, Uncle Vasant and Auntie Champa, if, if you bring your kids up in America, that idea of love coming afterwards, if that, is that really hard? Because that's a way of thinking. And if you're living in a culture where people don't think like that, how do you pass that on to your kids? It's really, really, really hard. And we, I mean, over the years, uh, we have undergone a change or so-called adjustment or acceptance of it. But I think like Ravi was responding to you about the marriage, the way they work, is because it's not a marriage between a girl and a boy. It's a marriage between both the family and their extended family. Mm -hmm. So like in India, if you want to divorce, you first don't go to court. The family, all the members have to agree. And there are so many people involved. So it's not as easy as somebody just go and file and say, I'm going to pack up and leave. So many people are involved and they all try to make it work. So it, it's really a marriage of a lot of different relationships, family, and that's what it is. So we yeah. add that, uh, like uh, when we get married, um, and we always make a joke out of it because our weddings are so lengthy and so stressful that that guy or girl will never say, oh my God, I want to get divorced and get married again. Because, because it, that is yeah. so exhausting <laughs> by itself. And then, and then second thing is, and second thing is, anytime there is a problem, in uh, today's date, they both argue it out. They don't tell in anyone. And they said, okay, you go your way, I'll go my way. Well, in our culture or in, uh, in uh, our days rather, it was not the case. Uh, if something does happen, then mom will be the first one know that, you know, we are having this issue. So mom would sit down with them and or dad will sit down with them. Hey, guys, uh, that happens. It's Look at me and way. your dad. Look at what happened when I was growing up. Your dad did this to me. Your mom did this to me. And we are still together. Work it out. Give, give yourself a time. So they go back and they're like, you know, maybe they are right. Then they go to uncle and auntie. So this chain of counseling, and that is the very reason in India, we hardly have a marriage counselor. The we family, were the family, family was the family counselor. Are the, and each one is very uh, more than glad to give advice even when you don't need it. Yeah, so marriage, marriage, <laughs> is just, marriage is all about family. We, yeah. we counsel each other. And yeah, let me tell you, in a today's date even, we have helped so many people in our own family members if to there was an issue we have put them together and let me tell you it works i wish i can tell this message to the world that it does work listen to your elderly 
things does work out at the end. Well, be a little flexible. Actually, Auntie, yeah. they, they hear you loud and clear. I want to read you this tweet we got just a couple of minutes ago. This is from Ridwan who says, I just learned that arranged marriages do work out well today on AJ Stream. I always thought it was a rare occurrence if they did work out. So people uh, are listening to you. Um, but I want to go to this next tweet, this uh, Facebook post actually, pivot off of that. This is from Ibrar. And um, Surabi, I'll give this one to you. He's sharing his own story of arranged marriage. He says, it worked out for me. I married my wife after seeing her photo twice when I was 18. And I saw her in person when I was 30. And I've been happily married for 14 years wow. now. So that's one story. But I'm giving it to you, wow. Surabi, because I know in your own story, you didn't even see a picture. How did that work? That's right. I didn't even see his picture. He had seen mine, but I had no clue how he looked. I just trusted my father when he told me, okay, the guy looks good. But then I couldn't really trust him because each proposal that he brought, he always professed that the guy is very good looking. So I knew <laughs> the standard. I, so I knew, I knew what to expect from that statement. But to me, looks actually do not really matter that much. To me, beauty lies here and Sorry. it lies in the intellect. And he stimulated me intellectually, and that made me fall for him. So I saw him after saying yes to him. We were talking on phone. He had seen my pictures. So, Ravi, be he honest. All, be yeah. honest. When you oh, wow. first looked at Sanjay the first time, what did you think? Okay, honestly, yes. when I was on my way to when I was on my way to his uh, to the location where we were supposed to meet my heart was pounding i can tell you really and i was like what if i do not like him what if he has these chubby cheeks and what if he does not he has an ugly smile how would i manage but when i looked at him he looked calm he looked kind and he looked sweet. I've made, uh, well oiled hair and uh, she changed my personality a little bit after that. He looks much better so, now. Uh, <laughs> I just want to add one important point because uh, Patel sir has also raised it. it and you have also asked the question that uh, love begins after marriage. Mm. I don't know where is the boundary between liking and love. First you start liking a, a person, then somewhere uh, in, on the way you start loving that person. I don't know whether that boundary lies before marriage or sometime after marriage. And just it allows you to first uh, uh, see that whether you would be able to like that person or you will start liking the period between uh, the first conversation, then engagement and uh, before marriage. There is all possibility that you will be sure about whether you would like this person, you wouldn't uh, uh, or you would hate this person or you would want to go with that one and somewhere the love will happen just before marriage or after marriage so this uh, uh, there is no fixed boundary that okay uh, we cannot love before that uh, marriage date arrives and second that it is very useful for boys also that uh, otherwise girl may not be able to uh, may not be ready to talk to you mm. if you go and propose some girl she is simply saying hey, who are you when in my ninth class i ask you what is your name to one girl, she simply said, uh, go away. <laughs> Let me bring so back. that gives you an opportunity yeah. that, uh, okay, you get a, a number of a girl yeah. who, who, whose parents won't complain to police or your parents won't complain to <laughs> anything you talk to her. So I, feel that, like that I'm getting, nice I feel like I'm getting couple secrets. I like this. Um, let me go to Michael. Michael, I know Ansi is, you're both doctors and Ansi's had to go off and do some work. You're at her surgery right yes. now. Um, there's been a lot of laughter in our conversation today. Do you feel that you need to have a huge sense of humor in order, in order to approach marriage in this way? Because it's a little unpredictable and yeah, kind of scary. I mean, I think, yeah, yeah, no, it could be very scary. And I think humor and laughter help in two ways. One, it, if somebody's very, you know, can laugh easily and things, it's, it's a sign that they're fairly easy to get, uh, get along with. And I think they're also, it kind of shows that they're more open to things and that they're, in a way, not afraid to laugh at themselves. So those things help out a lot, I think, being able to joke with each other. So, If uh, you could give the best piece of advice from your experience with ANSI, passing it on to somebody else who's, who's actually thinking, uh, it's about time, I'm 29, going to be 30 soon, need to get <laughs> married. Actually, the family yeah. are saying that. Exactly. <laughs> what, would you, what would you say? What would you say to that person out there watching? 
you know, and we kind of talked about this yesterday, surprised it before we spoke to Shreen, but yeah. I think the biggest thing is that, you know, you, I think it's important to have differences in your personalities because if you're with the same person, then it could get boring. And it's nice to have those differences that complement each other and contrast each other because I think those differences is what helps us, you know, respectfully become a better person together with the other person. So I don't think people should be afraid if they're scared, oh, this person's, you know, really different from me and things because that could actually can be a blessing in disguise. Ravi, what would be your advice having gone through this whole arranged dating journey and come out the other side? I, I won't give away the ending uh, of the, of the movie or the ending of your life because yeah, you're still in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what would your advice Thank be? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> still hanging, hanging on by a thread here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, my main advice would be, uh, you know, don't let your sister film the whole thing. Maybe, maybe leave her out of it. <laughs> I think it actually had a wonderful intimacy. Um, Ravi's sister uh, filmed the documentary Meet the Battelles, and it had an incredible intimacy because everybody was very relaxed in front of the camera. She even went on dates with you. I don't want to give too much away, but uh, September 11th yeah. is when Meet the Battelles will be in cinemas and then hopefully available around the world as well. Malika, what do you have? I will give a piece of advice from our community. This is from Pavitra, who says, please know what you're in for. Ask the parents and the guy or the girl that you are marrying everything and give the bride and groom enough time to make their decision. I can't resist it. Uncle Vasant and Auntie Champa, final words. Last piece of advice for us. Yeah, there is always a right girl and a right boy. And if you give it a chance, keep your antenna pulled out. There is always a right one you will catch. So if you are ready, it will happen. All right. Yeah, and always, <laughs> always give a love uh, and see with uh, lovely eyes. And I tell you, there is a love that really travels with a positive vibration. And you catch the right <laughs> one. Oh my goodness, you two make me want to go and get married today. <laughs> right, look, check out this. This is my antenna right here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sending you my bio data. Ravi and Uncle Vasan, Auntie Champa, Saravi and Sanjay, and also Michael, and I know Ansi is over there working away. They're over there, Thank yeah. you so much for being part of this arranged marriage show. We really appreciated your insight. Take care, everybody.